anyone that knows me knows that I'm probably one of the biggest fangirls ever. So naturally when One Direction said they were doing a tour here, I had to buy a ticket and because there's no such thing as too much One Direction, I ended up getting three. So originally I had two lots of tickets. Ticketek sent out a tweet that was saying that they had moved around the stage or something and realised I had all these spare seats. So they were selling out tickets. 15th of October, that night I was packing because I was leaving for Melbourne the next morning. Jumped on Ticketek and found some seats spare for the show on the 16th. Um, and I bought a ticket. <laughs> it was literally not even 24 hours before the show when I bought it and it was the 13th row from the stage. It was a long aisle because I was standing, I was at the last ticket on the side. So I could just see everything. Everything was perfect. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. So I went and fangirled a lot at that one and attempted to take selfies with Five Sloss. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a really fun night as well. Really impressed by my seats at that one. It, for the first concert I went to, um, Louis was really sick, so his voice wasn't 100% and he couldn't sing heaps of his lyrics, um, so the other boys were kind of helping him out. But then by this concert, which was like 10 days later, he was all good to go. Um, my pair of sunglasses that were in my bag, and they're like, one of the security guards said to the other, this is not a joke, by the way. That really sounded like the start of a joke. <laughs> Two security guards walked into a bar. No. Um, so they said to each other, oh, can they take sunglasses in? I was, don't know if we're allowed to. And they went and asked their, like, supervisor or something. And they're like, oh, yeah, you can take sunglasses in. And I was like, well, yes. What am I going to do with them? One of my friends was at a sound check that day. So then I met up with her and we had to enter through the same door anyway. So we are just kind of fangirling to each other before we went in. And then we turned out to be like 10 rows apart from each other. So I was at that concert by myself because I'm the ultimate loner. Um, so I just kind of kept talking to her in the breaks. The third concert, we got there, met some of our friends that were at Soundcheck, met some of my other friends, found good with them for a bit, then headed in. Um, this time we were second row from the B stage because as I have recently discovered, my talents basically, you know, start at getting really good seats to concerts. And that's about all there is to it. <laughs> that concludes my talents. <laughs> um, since this is our last concert, it's like, you know what, let's just make some signs. So I didn't really know what to write, not really all that witty. Um, <laughs> so I got. I just kind of grabbed some lyrics out of um, Try Hard and Best Song Ever. When we got to the gate, they checked it. They're like, yeah, that's fine, you can go. Security came up. After Five Sauces set, they came up and looked at my signs again and got really weird. They're like, that is far too inappropriate. Um, I was like, don't worry about the Five Sauce one, that's already been and gone. You know, if anyone was going to see it, they would have seen it when they are on stage and now I'm not going to hold it up again because they've gone. And then they were really not okay with my 1D sign. I was like, okay, why? Apparently, um, saying, can I take you home with me on the take me home tour was apparently really inappropriate. Um, yeah, the security guard got really mad. He's like, that is far too inappropriate to be on a sign at this concert. Which is literally lyrics to best song ever. I changed the word Georgia to Emma and that is literally the only thing I've changed. The rest is lyrics, Google it. Um, some other security lady walked over and read it and she's like, I'll just check with my supervisor if you're allowed to have it. So she went and asked her supervisor and then she came back and she like winked and was like, no, you can keep it, it's fine. I was like, yes. They made such a big deal about us taking in anything that we could throw at the boys, yet somehow every concert I went to, somebody pegged something at them when they got to the B stage. 
Like, one of the nights, somebody threw a packet of Tim Tams at Harry, and he's like, cool, just open them and started eating them on stage and, like, throwing them to the audience. It's like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> How did you get in a packet of Tim Tams when I can't even get in that much water? Our last night in Melbourne, so we're like, let's go to Crown. So we went back to the hotel, got pretty, went down to Crown, and then the second we walked through, I, like, got our IDs checked, walked into the casino, there was Josh Devine just standing, like, literally right there. And we're just like, oh my god, <laughs> it's Josh, don't panic. <laughs> he was kind of getting a bit mobbed by a bunch of girls. So we were like, yeah, better give him some space. Um, maybe we'll come back later. So we just kind of, like, smiled at him and he smiled back and then we kept walking. And he seemed to completely have taken off after that, so... I don't know if it was, I don't know, it was getting late, so he probably went to bed. We saw Josh and we're like, hey, wonder if we'll see anyone else. So then we decided to get our stalk on and wanted our own crown. But that proved to be pretty uneventful. Uh, so we were just kind of sitting in crown, eating ice cream at like 3am in the morning. Um, the day we arrived in Melbourne, got on Twitter and Ashton and Callum were like out for lunch somewhere in Melbourne. I showed the photo of my best friend and she's like, oh, I think they're in St Kilda. And I was like, oh, okay. And we didn't think anything about it because we couldn't really tell an hour later. They're like, at St Kilda Beach. And we're like, damn it. <laughs> Could have got our stalk on. Ginger Crown. Um... And we're walking through and we meet these girls who are like, oh, this is our sixth time stalking One Direction here. And we're like, oh, okay. And like, we keep getting asked to leave, but we don't. <laughs> we're like, okay, great. They were like, yeah, the gym's on level three. We've seen Harry and Liam there before. And we're like, okay. And they're like, come with us. And we're like, no thanks. We're then they headed up and we just decided to hang around and see if it worked because it was funny because they were crazy. And then they came down and they're like, got to the elevator, doors open, security were like, don't even think about it, and kicked them back down. So they were pretty sure the boys were in the gym at that stage because there was like all this security lining the, um, lining the gym entrance. And then we were walking through Crown and then we left. I went to South Wharf or wherever we went shopping. And um, then Callum decided he'd post a keek on the Five Sus account of him dancing around in the corridors of the shopping area in Crown where we had literally just been walking through. We're just like, thanks, Callum, thanks. Um, so we decided to absolutely leg it. We kind of piss bolted back. Thought we were gonna find Callum walking around. He wasn't there. So we got a selfie in the area where he was because it was really amusing <laughs> at the time. So yeah, didn't meet anyone. Terrible at stalking. First attempt at trying to be a creep. Didn't work. How does everyone meet everybody? I'm just trying to be creepy. It felt really uncomfortable doing it. Um, so successfully didn't meet Tyler Oakley. Prince Harry was in Sydney when we were there. Didn't meet him either. Didn't meet One Direction, didn't meet Five Sauce, saw Josh Devon, but didn't meet him. Um, Paul was the biggest success I had, talking to Paul. Couldn't even get a photo, but chatted to Paul. So yeah, long, long story short, amazing concerts. Loved all three. Um, if I li no, lived in a major city, then I probably would have gone to more concerts, not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, I was really impressed with them, really happy I went, and you know, had an amazing time in Melbourne and Sydney, and Soundcheck, I'm glad I went to Soundcheck. Um, at first I was kinda like, wow, Soundcheck's kind of expensive. But like it was worth it for the seats, I think. Like It would've been nicer if Soundcheck went for a little bit longer, and there was like a meet and greet or something. 
but other than that it was amazing and I'm really glad I did it. My signs, um, I find when I finally got to keep the 1D one, um, holding it up when they came over to the B stage, Liam looked at it, laughed and then winked and then um, Zane was like tilting his head so he could read it properly and then just kind of like smirked and I was like, hi. <laughs> yeah, got some got some interaction with 1D at all three concerts, so it seems, so went pretty well there. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you went to a sound check or a concert on the tour or any of that and we can fangirl together because, um, yeah, so that's, that's all. <laughs> I'm gonna go now. Bye!